We may we see a Deadpool 4? Oh, God, no. It, my uh, wife and, ch and children will divorce me. Yeah, I will be capital B broke and in turn probably then doing Deadpool 4. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we cannot make that no. happen. So, yeah. I asked you guys this at the junket and I'll bring it up again. I mean, people genuinely love this movie and they love the collaboration of the three of you. Have there been those additional phone calls after all this box office success at Marvel being like, so let's talk about the future? I don't, uh, you know, I, I would say that, you know, Sean and I have been, I mean, pretty clear and 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 I think in a, the most loving way, because talk about the, the greatest uptown problem any human beings could have is, you know, a studio like that saying, what's next or how can we make something, you know, else? And I, I but this movie was made as a complete experience. It wasn't meant to be a commercial for another movie. It wasn't it meant to be any of that stuff. And I think that there's like, I think I, I get a great deal of joy. The excerpt you gave appears to cover a range of topics, including Disney's artistic direction, the future of the Deadpool series, and some social commentary on the company's position on various subjects. I'll expand on this to create a 600 word essay that links these ideas. The future of the Deadpool series has been a little unclear over the last several years. The question of whether Ryan Reynolds will ever wear the red and black costume again has fans wondering all across the globe. Reynolds has acknowledged his desire to reprise his role as Deadpool, but he is unsure of what lies ahead. Reynolds said in a recent interview, I hope I get to wear that Deadpool suit again, but I have no idea. But right now, it's a time to hang it up for a bit and see what happens next. It's interesting to note that Reynolds made it clear that neither Disney nor Marvel was pressuring Deadpool to fit into a certain movie world or pave the stage for a greater role like an appearance in Avengers films. Some people may be surprised by this considering Marvel's history of interwoven narrative. Reynolds did, however, note that the studio gave him and his creative group the latitude to create a self-contained story that stood alone and was fulfilling. The success of Deadpool, a movie that went viral despite having a little budget and an unusual tone, has been greatly attributed to this creative freedom. Ryan Reynolds has been more than simply the actor in the mask from the beginning. He was the major catalyst for the transformation of Deadpool from a cult favorite into a popular figure. His piercing wit, irreverent humor, and readiness to breach social norms gave the character a unique personality that connected with viewers. Reynolds has also contributed significantly to the scripting and creative process of every Deadpool film, making sure that the character both innovates and remains loyal to his comic book roots. Behind the scenes, however, there have been whispers of conflict between Reynolds and Disney, Disney purchased the rights to Deadpool when it acquired 21st Century Fox. Reynolds and Disney may have lately spat over creative authority, according to sources. The darker, R-rated material and black humor of the Deadpool series contrast sharply with Disney's more family-oriented image. The topic of how Deadpool will fit into the larger Marvel Cinematic Universe MCU has been raised by this tone discrepancy, particularly as Disney has a history of favoring PG-13 films over R-rated ones. Some fans have expressed concern that Disney may water down Deadpool in future installments to align with its brand. Reynolds, however, has been a staunch advocate for maintaining the character's edge, humor, and adult themes. It's no secret that Disney and Reynolds have clashed over these creative differences, with Reynolds fighting to preserve Deadpool's identity in a franchise now owned by a company with a different vision for its films. Beyond creative disputes, Disney has found itself at the center of a broader cultural debate. Critics of the entertainment giant have accused it of shifting away from being a company that creates magic for children to one that increasingly promotes a political agenda. In recent years, Disney has made headlines for its inclusion of LGBTQIA themes in its films and TV shows, as well as its vocal support for various progressive social movements. While many people have praised Disney for its commitment to diversity and representation, others have taken issue with what they perceive as the company pushing a woke agenda. This ideological shift has been especially controversial among conservative groups who argue that Disney is using its vast influence to groom children and indoctrinate them with certain social values. 
One critic even went so far as to say, Disney has turned from a place of magic for children to an ideological company serving LGBTQIA lobbies. Such statements reflect a broader societal divide over the role of media in shaping cultural norms and values, especially when it comes to issues of gender, sexuality, and identity. As Disney celebrates its 100th anniversary, the company finds itself at a crossroads. On one hand, it remains a beloved entertainment powerhouse with a century of iconic films, characters, and memories. On the other hand, it faces increasing scrutiny for its evolving stance on social issues and its approach to creative control. For Deadpool, this means navigating a future where the character's beloved irreverence and edgy humor may face constraints in a larger, more homogenized MCU. Whether Ryan Reynolds will don the suit again remains to be seen, but one thing is clear. Both he and his fans are eager to see Deadpool's unique voice preserved in whatever comes next. This extended text builds on the themes of uncertainty about Deadpool's future, the tension between Ryan Reynolds and Disney over creative control, and Disney's evolving social stance. It captures the various elements of the original text while adding more context and depth of history by collaborating with the San Francisco Gay Man's Chorus to produce LGBTQ plus themed Disney musical this is a group who have explicitly stated that they want to indoctrinate children, they literally sang a concert. And they sang the word, we will convert your children quietly and subtly, and you will barely notice it quietly and subtly and you will barely notice it will convert your children we're coming for them, we're coming for your children. Disney chose to collaborate with these predators to sing to children. How can you explain to parents worldwide that over the next few months dozens of highly sexualized gay pride parades will take place in Disneyland parks worldwide, the exact places where they used to take their children for fun? Are you surprised that Disney's audience has plummeted, losing 2.4 million subscribers in the last quarter? Parents have simply had it up to here. No wonder you are laying off 7,000 employees from today in addition to the other thousands last year. No wonder Disney stock value dropped more than 30% over one year as a Disney shareholder. I have a simple question, would it not be beneficial for the company to ditch the LGBTQA plus and gender ideology for good? If I were really interested in refloating Disney, please turn Disney back to be a political fun place that it used to be, and I bet that you'll win back both the trust of families and the stock market. Thank you, we've recently gotten criticism, as you just expressed for what some perceive to be agenda-driven content. And I'm sensitive to that actually our primary mission needs to be to entertain and then through our entertainment to continue to have a positive impact on the world. And I'm very serious about that. It's hood not be agenda driven. It's hood be entertainment driven. That should be the goal in all of our stories. And while I know we're just never going to please everyone all the time, we should be sensitive to the fact that parents have different levels of comfort with the content that is delivered to their children. I want, I want parents to be able to trust the content that we're creating for their children, and we're committed to delivering appropriate content for family audiences, while also tell, link stories that reflect the world around use and that Foster a greater understanding, greater perspective, greater acceptance of all people. And it's just my hope that that Disney continues to be a source of hope and optimism for the world. And we're honored to actually carry for the Walt's legacy of inspiring joy and wonder. For for everyone, slaves, built this country and we the descendants of slaves in America have earned reparations for their suffering and continue to earn reparations every moment we spend submerged in the systemic prejudice. Racism and white supremacy that America was founded with and still has a twin for slaves built. This country, the seer of the tampons I usually use, thank you I prefer pads, they're more comfortable form, I always get the ones with wings, thank it unscented. I love what you said about wanting to entertain audiences, critics saying Disney's too woke but you're just putting out storytelling. Where look I don't really like the term woke, because I think it's an umbrella term that I'm, I'm not 100% sure. I even know what it means, and one could argue that sometimes, it's used to illiberally, that said our primary purpose is to entertain and where we can entertain responsibly. Of course, we strive to entertain first and foremost in order to make a positive impact on the world. But things became more complicated when Disney acquired Fox and the rights to Deadpool. Disney, a family-friendly company best known for its PG-13 Marvel films, takes a very different approach to filmmaking than the R-rated chaos that makes Deadpool so unique. Ever since the acquisition, Reynolds and Disney executives have disagreed about how to handle the character moving forward. 
committed to advancing its inclusion, equality, and diversity. Ryan isn't entirely on board with Day's insistence on adding more socially conscious elements to Deadpool's story, but he isn't against Day in general. In fact, he supported a number of diverse projects in the past. But when it comes to Deadpool, he has a different perspective. It's not about rejecting representation, rather it's about safeguarding the franchise's integrity. Ryan has seen prior Disney productions that were mostly think at previous Little Mermaid remakes when the criticism eclipsed the picture itself, or consider Snow White which hasn't even been released yet but is already receiving negative internet reviews. Both fans and reviewers tear apart day. Ryan, you've been writing about this for a time now, Disney and a hard R are here. This Korg who wasn't my first pick has a whole new hue and I hope it doesn't sound too smug. Apparently, everyone else was too busy on Disney+. Plus. The interesting story, oh boy, would be that Disney was horrified by everything and decided to stop it, while Marvel was unable to cooperate and would never allow us to take any action. However, that puts them in a difficult situation because, well, money puts Disney in a tough position. After all, we take pride in completing our projects on schedule, within budget, or even ahead of schedule, as Hakuna has taught us. This is a trust-building exercise that they had a lot of, and to ourselves, I personally cannot believe they let us die. Because we were like the kind of good, um, you know, good boy students turning in our script every once in a while. We were like kind of waiting, I guess. The movie is exactly how we planned or wrote when we wrote the script, like start to finish with all of our alt jokes, everything. So if you were a showman, you would be the greatest that they sort of saw that, may also softly touch the fourth wall. The proposal, well, presuming going very SC was, and the pushback never materialized, and it became evident that, in this case, funny prevails. He is concerned that, should Disney put these aspects into the film in a manner that appears forced, Deadpool may suffer the same fate. Ryan has invested a great deal of time and energy in Deadpool, and he doesn't want the movie to turn into another contentious issue that divides people. Instead, he wants to prevent a scenario in which fans believe the company is trying to make a statement. It's not the first time Disney has argued with creatives over its dare. But he feels that instead of concentrating on producing a fantastic movie, it may badly harm the character's image and affect the box revenue, which is something that no one wants. Actors, directors, and directors have departed projects because they believe the corporation was more concerned with ticking boxes than producing quality movies. But in this case, things are different, because Ryan Reynolds isn't just any actor. He's Deadpool. And without him, disney -neth. The worst part is that Disney officials are attempting to use Ryan Reynolds as a cash cow for their DA projects, rather than for Deadpool, even though they are aware they don't have a Deadpool franchise. With only two films, Deadpool has become a box office powerhouse, earning over $1.5 billion worldwide. Deadpool's money doesn't only go into Disney's coffers, the studio needs that money flow to support additional D-driven films and television series. In other words, they want Deadpool's enormous success to finance endeavors that may not have the same perfect. The thing that irritates me the most is the commercial appeal or built-in audience. Ryan is against Deadpool's name being exploited as a guinea pig to fund movies that Disney knows won't do as well, but are approved to further their social objectives. It's unreasonable, in Ryan's opinion, for Disney to use Deadpool's popularity to support unrelated ventures that don't fit the character's tone or fan expectations. Things have become so heated that Reynolds has dropped out of three planned projects, Disney productions that would have completely changed the X-Men and Deadpool universe. And they weren't just any movies either. They were big Marvel productions. Disney had grand plans to include Deadpool in the main Marvel Cinematic Universe MCU, beginning with a series of crossovers involving other mutants and eventually progressing to more ambitious team-ups. However, Ryan decided to step away when Disney began pressuring him to include more day elements in these scripts. This wasn't just about including diverse characters or storylines, though. Been sympathetic to the idea that, rather than allowing the Deadpool series to organically include a variety of characters or themes, Disney's approach appeared forced and disjointed from what Deadpool is all about. 
Disney attempted to forcefully include features that were incongruous with the tone or the chaotic freeform universe of Deadpool. For instance, Disney intended to emphasize marginalized communities by adding whole new characters to the Deadpool tale. But these additions didn't suit the pre-existing narrative. Include somber topics pertaining to identity and social justice, which are crucial concerns. Indeed, but it seemed as though the message was taking precedence over the plot. Reynolds was concerned that this would make the film seem haphazard and unauthentic, thereby alienating the core Deadpool fanbase. And that's where the real debate began. Deadpool's success stems from its NOSP style, in which nothing is off-limits and everyone is a target for Deadpool's antics. Reynolds thinks that Deadpool should be edgy, controversial, and over-the-top in its own unique manner. Scathing humor. It's not only about Deadpool 4, however. Attempting to squeeze Disney's expertly crafted day-driven tale into that would be like trying to put a square peg into a circular hole. Reynolds was meant to spearhead Disney's grander scheme to revive the X-Men property. This plan included a number of Deadpool-related X-Men spin-offs, collaborations, and even endeavors that would have seen Hugh Jackman's character, Wolverine, make more appearances. Disney was betting billions of dollars on these movies, intending to utilize them as the Ryan's participation was essential for Phase 6 and beyond, as he has been Deadpool's face and a major factor in enthusing fans about mutants entering the MCU. Here with one of my closest buddies is Ryan Reynolds. Hugh Jackman. When the creative disagreements reached a breaking point, Ryan withdrew from all of these projects. Bob Iger, the CEO of Disney, and other top executives tried to persuade him to return by offering creative control and substantial financial incentives. But Ryan refused to allow Disney's day agenda to dictate Deadpool's story, especially when it meant that Ryan's interpretation of the character would become bland and unrecognizable. For Ryan, it's not about the money. Disney was forced to scramble and call emergency meetings in an attempt to salvage what remained of their Deadpool and X-Men plans. They intended to use Deadpool's popularity to support more day-focused projects and use the franchise's success to financially back other films, but those plans are seriously jeopardized without Ryan. Reynolds isn't scared to play the cards if it means he's holding all the cards. Ryan Reynolds is standing by his decision to keep Deadpool from becoming just another corporate product. He has stated that the story must come first, and if Disney doesn't support this decision, it appears that the Merc with a Mouth may close its doors permanently, at least while it is under Disney's ownership. What do you think? Should Ryan stick to his guns, or should Disney's day push take center stage? Let me know in the comments section below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification. Click to get informed about all the most recent dramas in Hollywood.